So this is a Strix 4090 desktop edition. This is a Asus Zephyrus 14, and it also has an RTX 4090 in it. How in the world do you get this inside of here? Now, all jokes aside, I know that the laptop 4090 is not the same as this huge desktop RTX 4090. I think this has a TGP of 400 plus watts. This one doesn't even have the 175 watt TGP of a full-fledged laptop 4090. It actually has a only 125 watt TGP. But today I'm gonna to talk about what compromises you're going to make by going to much, a much portable form factor laptop versus a larger 16, 17, 18 inch laptop with the highest spec graphics cards in it. So the Zephyrus 14 I have here is the 7940HS AMD CPU processor, the 4090 RTX uh, GPU from Nvidia, and this one has the Nebula display, 600 nits, 165 hertz. Uh, since it has the Nebula display, it does not have the anime matrix uh, feature on the back of the screen where you can toggle some LEDs to create different patterns to look like uh, different uh, cartoons or what have you, whatever you want on the back of the laptop. So if you're considering the Asus Zephyrus 14 with the 4090 and the 7940HS processor from AMD, you're probably very worried about performance, but you're equally or even more importantly worried about portability. And this is the most portable hardware packed laptop that you can get. There's no other 14 inch laptop with a 4090 that I know of. But what compromises do you make by doing that? Well, let's go over that very quickly. The most important performance compromise is obviously in gaming and GPU usage. As I said earlier, this has a only 125 watt TGP 4090 versus the 175 watt on the bigger gaming laptops. And actually you don't make that big of a compromise in that arena. I did some benchmarks versus my Asus Strix Scar 16 with the full 4090 powered laptop. And you only lose about 15% in Cyberpunk and about 10% in Red Dead Redemption at the native screen resolution for each laptop, which just happens to be the same, 1600p. Now, you're, you're losing about 50 watts of power going from that laptop to this laptop, but you only lose about 10 to 15% of the performance, which is actually a very good trade-off, in my opinion. You still can play, you know, at the native resolution of the screen, get very high FPS, but you have a much more portable. Uh, Another thing you might be wondering is, since this is a only 125 watt 4090, how does it compare to the 4080 in the same laptop? The 4080 is also 125 watt TGP in the Zephyrus 14. So is the 4090 actually any better? Is there any reason to get it over the 4080? Well, I don't have the actual 4080 Zephyrus 14 to compare directly against, but from the benchmarks I've read online, and I'll show you here from what I found, it's about 10, 12% better than the 4080 version of this laptop. And that's still pretty good. I don't know if it's worth the price difference, whatever that is right now, it could be several hundred dollars or $600 even more to go over that one. But if you want maximum performance, this still, even though it's kneecapped a little bit, the 4090 version of this laptop is still the best performing version of this laptop. In regards to CPU performance, the Zephyrus 14 can only come at best with the AMD 7940HS, and that only has eight cores. For single thread performance, this is not a huge hurt against the other bigger gaming laptops that have like the Intel 13980HX. You'll still get good gaming performance as I just showed the benchmarks is not hugely different against the Strix Scar, which has a 13980HX. But in multi-threaded applications for like, you know, video editing, rendering, what have you, you're going to suffer since you only have eight cores versus like the 24 cores in the Intel variant. And they most likely went with the 7940HS because it uses less power, has less heat to dissipate, is just easier to fit in this chassis and cool in this chassis. You might think the performance is mostly what you're giving up on by going into an ultra portable gaming laptop. Well, unfortunately, there is one more big compromise that I've noticed. This laptop, while it's in, you know, portable mode, which is, I, 
I call it like silent mode in Armory Crate. 50% brightness, 50% sound. Uh, it probably draws the same amount of power as his bigger 16 inch counterparts because they're both in a low power state. But the difference is that this laptop, since it's small, has a smaller battery. I think it has a 78 watt hour battery, whereas the 16 inch laptops usually have the, the maximum 99 watt hour battery that you can bring on a plane. And this reflects in the total battery life that you get from this laptop. So this laptop gets about 1.67 minutes per percent battery. So if you had 100% battery, you would have 167 minutes of runtime. Um, and that's about two hours, 40 minutes. If you're more conservative, it's about two hours and a half. Whereas the Strixcar 16 with its bigger battery gets about two minutes per percent battery life, giving you 200 minutes or a little bit over three hours, three hours, 20 minutes, give or take. Now, since this is a portable laptop, that kind of hurts because it makes it less portable in that sense. You kind of have to be ready to plug it in at any time. But it's also a very powerful laptop, so it's an Achilles heel of all gaming laptops. It just is more of an Achilles heel for a small gaming laptop since it cannot stuff a fatter battery into the chassis. Another mild disadvantage of this laptop versus the Strixcar 16 and the Razer Blade 16 which have more uh, power, more battery actually, is that the screen doesn't get quite as bright. It is the same exact resolution as the Strixcar 16 at 1600p, but this HDR this Nebula display only goes to 600 nits, whereas the Strixcar 16 goes to about 1000 nits. Now you can see in direct uh, daylight exposure, the Strixcar 16 is a little bit brighter. Uh, this is kind of disappointing because this laptop is much more likely to see you know, outside and uh, uncontrolled light area conditions since it's very portable, you can just kind of bring it with you, whatever. Whereas the Strixcar 16 is probably more likely sitting in one spot for an extended amount of time. It doesn't need quite as bright as the screen. So this kind of knocks at its portability just a little bit. So what do you gain by going into a smaller laptop? Obviously you gain weight and portability in dimensions. So look at this, I'll stack this laptop against the Razer Blade 16 and the Strix Scar 16. And you can see that not only is it like two pounds lighter, it's clearly obviously a lot smaller with height and every dimension than those laptops. Even the charger, which is not even a GAN charger, is smaller than the Razer Blade 16 GAN charger. And you can probably get a third party GAN charger for this laptop with the right adapter and it'll be even smaller than the charger it comes with. So in that regards, yes, it is much more portable than its bigger uh, siblings. You don't compromise too much at all on build quality on this laptop. As you can see, the all plastic chassis doesn't have much flex to it. Uh, the keys are nice and the trackpad is glass. There's, I don't feel like the build quality feels cheap. It doesn't feel the most premium either, but I have no complaints with it. Even the bottom has some magnesium metal. Uh, I don't know why, it's more like an accent to me. I don't think it serves with real functionality, maybe besides some heat dissipation. It does have these three little rubber grommets that cover up screw holes. I don't know why they is bothered with that since all other screws are exposed anyways, and this just makes it more annoying to uninstall and reinstall when you're making hardware upgrades to the laptop. But in any case, it's, it's kind of nice. There's no major complaints for me on the build quality. And even with the keyboard itself, uh, like the Strixcar 16, it has actually very decent key travel. So when you're gaming, you, you have to make very intentional uh, movements. You don't, you won't make accidental key presses. It has about 1.6 uh, millimeters of key travel distance, as I measured. I think Asus lists 1.7, so probably within the margin of error is about the same as they report. And that's almost the same as the Strixcar 16 at around two millimeters. So it's a very good gaming keyboard and just nice to type on because of the key travel distance. And this is even compared to the bigger Razer Blade 16, which only has a one millimeter of key travel distance. The aesthetics of this laptop were pretty, I would say, average. They, it doesn't, it's not very gamery and it's not also not very, it's not super plain either. It has a nice white accent perforated on the back. This particular version doesn't have the anime matrix, which only comes with the uh, non HDR display. So you can't, you know, make the back look like a certain pattern. Um, but otherwise it's, it's understated. It looks like any other completely white laptop. 
I mean, if you had a you know MacBook from 2010 that was all white, it kind of is reminiscent of that. Uh, the only RGB part of the laptop is the keyboard. Uh, there's no other RGB lights. So if you're looking for a more gamer-y aesthetic laptop that's more busy, uh, like the Strix Scar 16, you can't get it here at all. There's no way to option it unless you get the Anime Matrix, which is not that interesting looking. But just know that if you want something more exciting looking, this is probably not it. This is definitely, I would say, pretty understated, which might be an advantage depending on how you look at it. Also make a huge compromise in cooling performance on this small laptop. Uh, something that's kind of baked in with the lower heat generating components. But in general, during gaming load, I noticed the GPU only got to maybe high 70s on average in a 70 degree Fahrenheit uh, ambient room. And the CPU would boost all the way up to 4.9 gigahertz in multi-core load in Cinebench. So that's pretty good. There's no max boost spec for multi-core on this 7940HS, but the maximum single core is 5.2. So getting to 4.9 on all cores in a synthetic load is pretty good. Uh, the CPU obviously goes up to as high as it's gonna allow uh, as all the boosting CPUs do. So it gets to around the 90s, which is normal. Another aspect of the cooling that the Zephyrus 14 does a really good uncompromised job at is keeping the heat away from areas where you're going to put your hands the most, especially during gaming. Now, I took a FLIR image of the laptop after running a game for about an hour. You can see Asus took real care to move the heat away from the palm rest area, the WASD area, and where you would put the backspace and the enter key. So clearly, a lot of engineering thought was put into mine in designing the thermals for this laptop. So you'll have no trouble playing games for a long period of time without getting sweaty hands or any uncomfortableness in touching the laptop. Uh, this is in stark contrast to some other laptops where the heat just goes everywhere. Something you definitely don't compromise on in going to this smaller uh, gaming laptop is the sound quality. On the Zephyrus 14, I think they have the best speakers on par with the MacBook 14 and the best Windows laptop speakers that are available on the market. So let me let you hear this. This is at 100% volume. So the sound is very full and it's also pretty loud. Asus should really take whoever designed the speakers on laptop, this laptop and put it on all their other laptops, especially my Strix Scar 16, which actually doesn't sound quite as good as this one, even though it's much larger, as actually kind of bothers me. But they did a great job on this one. Uh, best sounding speakers for any Windows laptop I've heard. So my kind of overall take on this laptop is that if you really need the portability and the the most power you can get, this is the la this is basically the only choice you have. Uh, you're not gonna find another small laptop with a 4090 in it if you really need that performance for gaming or whatever, what have you. Uh, so in that in that in my mind that makes it a buy. Uh, you can get it on sale for a little bit less than three thousand dollars sometimes. Uh, is it the best value? No. The best value version of this laptop is probably the 4080 version. You're only losing another 10% of performance on top of the 4090 here. That's already kind of gimped from the full version, uh, 175 watt TGP. But I don't think that 10% is gonna make, make or break you uh, since the performance is already pretty good. I personally don't need that portability, so I'd rather have the full power of the components in there. So I will lug around a fatter laptop since I'm not gonna bring it from room to room or you know, cafe to cafe or office to office uh, that often. But if you're going to do that, this is perfectly acceptable to do since it's very light. The charger's not very big. You can also use USB-C charging if you're not uh, needing the full power of the laptop. If you found this content useful or entertaining, please like and subscribe below. As I've mentioned before, I'm a test engineer by trade, so I'd love to get more tech products in, review them and share my experience with you guys. So 
hopefully in the new year, you'll see a lot more videos coming out of this channel. Thanks.